Welcome to another Digital Anarchy tutorial. I'm Jim Tierney, president of Digital Anarchy. And in this tutorial, we're going to go over the basics of Beautybox and some tips and tricks on using it within Final Cut Pro. So the first thing to know about using it within Final Cut Pro is that it does work in both 7 and Final Cut Pro 10. Uh, I'm showing it in Final Cut Pro 10 right now. But it works pretty much the same in Final Cut Pro 7. Just the interface looks a little bit different. You would just apply it from the Filters tab instead of the Effects menu that we have going on over here. But one thing in particular about Final Cut Pro 10 that you need to know is that Beautybox is pretty render intensive. And actually that goes for pretty much anywhere you, you use Beautybox. But this makes a big difference in Final Cut Pro 10 because of some of the features that it has that 7 and some of the other host apps don't have. So I always turn off scrubbing. And I also turn off background rendering. So if we go to Final Cut Pro and Preferences, you can see that I have background rendering turned off. And so this is really important, actually. Background rendering needs to be off, and scrubbing should be off as well. The problem that happens with these two features is that because Beautybox can take a little while to render, especially if you're trying to do background rendering and Final Cut is trying to render out every last frame that's in your clip, is that it takes a lot of processing power away from just using Final Cut generally and it conflicts with Beautybox being applied. And so Final Cut can seem very sluggish if you have background rendering on and scrubbing enabled because Final Cut's trying to render multiple frames while you're trying to render a single frame here. And so you end up with the beach ball showing up and it just, the interface being very sluggish. So the usual way to solve that problem is by turning off background rendering and scrubbing. Now, this gets into the workflow of using Beautybox a little bit. So the first thing we're gonna do is apply Beautybox from our effects tab and drop it on our clip. And we're going to see all of the controls show up in the inspector over here. So you have to have the inspector turned on to see the beauty box controls. But this brings up an interesting workflow point in that beauty box is not a real time effect. So it's going to slow Final Cut down a little bit. Not very much. You can see that we can jump around here without too much of an issue. But again, it's not a real time effect. And so usually what we recommend is either you apply Beautybox as the first step, get it set up, and then turn it off, and then do your editing, or apply it as the very last step after you've completed the edit, everything looks good, you've done your color corrections and everything else, and then you can just drop Beautybox onto the clip or the compound clip, and you're good to go. Since you're just basically applying a little bit of digital makeup, it's not necessary that you see it while you're editing. It's usually good enough just to apply it at the very end or at the very beginning and not actually view it while you're editing. That'll speed things up a little bit. You can turn on background rendering, scrubbing and all that good stuff, and you'll be good to go. So that's just some workflow tips to uh, get it running in Final Cut. The other thing to know about Beautybox is if you do have any problems, such as crashing or rendering artifacts or any weirdness that goes on. Viewbox does use the GPU of your video card to accelerate it. And sometimes that can conflict with what Final Cut Pro is doing. And it's very dependent on what the graphics card is, what other software is trying to use the GPU, and a whole bunch of other factors. So we do our best to make the GPU as bug-free as we can as it does speed up rendering quite a bit, and so that's an important thing, you know, especially if you have a very fast video card in your machine. But sometimes it conflicts, especially with other, if you have multiple plugins that are applied, they're using the GPU, and Final Cut is trying to use the GPU, and sometimes all those things can, together can conflict. And so sometimes it's just easiest to turn off Use GPU, and that will quite often solve those types of problems. All right, so enough of the caveats. Let's dive into Beautybox itself. So the way it works is you apply Beautybox, as you saw from the Effects tab. 
And the first thing you want to do is click on Analyze Frame. Well, the first thing you want to do is find the frame where your talent is facing the camera. And then click on Analyze Frame. Now, what this is going to do is run face detection and some other algorithms to figure out what the skin tones are. And we can see the mask that gets automatically created if we turn on Show Mask. One of the great new features in Beautybox 3.0 is that we no longer rely exclusively on face detection to figure out what the skin tones are. There's actually several algorithms we're using to try and figure that out, and face detection just happens to be one of them. So you don't need the talent facing the camera quite as much as you used to, but it's still helpful if you do have a frame where they are facing the camera head on. In any event, if you click on Analyze Frame, it's going to figure out what those skin tones are, build that automatic mask, and as long as your lighting doesn't change, you're pretty much good to go with that mask. It's going to track those skin tones throughout the entire video clip, and no matter where you move within the video clip, you can see that the mask remains really good, regardless of whether she moves her head, whether she turns her head, whether she laughs, talks, whatever, that mask is going to remain excellent. Now, it's possible you may want to touch the mask up a little bit, and that is also possible. You'll notice that if I turn the mask off, you can see that it didn't do a very good job of picking up the skin tones in the shadow areas. These are really dark shadow areas, and of course, those are significantly different than the rest of the skin tones. So I'm not surprised that it didn't pick it up. But this brings up a point in that you want to be very careful about these shadow areas in general. There's not really a lot of detail here. We don't really have a lot of detail to smooth out, unlike you know the brighter areas. And the other issue is that dark skin tones look very much the same as dark colors in the rest of the image. And so the problem that happens is if you try to pull in those dark areas, turn the mask on, it'll start picking up other parts of the image. And so the way you modify your mask is you go to the mode pop-up and select add color. And now with add color selected, we can just click in the preview window here on the areas that we want to include and we can see what happens. So I'm just going to click on the side of her nose right here. And you can see basically I just blew the whole mask up. It certainly included that dark color but because that dark color is in so many other parts of the image, it really messed it up. And so I'm going to back out and undo that and pretty much just leave it as is. We really don't need these darker areas. Again, there's really no detail there. And so it's really not important for us to pick it up. But add color does come in very useful if you're trying to pick up some areas that didn't get included in the mask, but aren't as dramatic as these dark colors here. You can see that if I come up to these gray areas and click on them, it gives me a better mask, but doesn't blow up the whole thing and start trying to include all sorts of dark areas that are in the image. So that's how you make adjustments to the mask. You can also adjust hue, saturation, and value ranges. This is going to constrain the mask a little bit more. So if we set this to say something like five, it's gonna create a little bit higher contrast mask. And that may be a little bit more desirable as well. All right, so we're pretty much done with the mask. That looks great. And we can take a look at some of the other features within Beautybox. You can do some basic color correction. One of the nice things about the color correction controls within Beautybox is that you can use the mask to constrain them. By and large, the color correction controls within Beautybox are not that robust. Uh, they're pretty simple. But they are good for a slight tweak. And again, using the mask, it can be very useful. 
We then come down to one of the other big new features in BeautyBox 3.0, which are the presets. This will give your footage some different styles and looks. They're essentially color treatments to the video. And we can see what some of these look like. Kind of a day to night type of look. And just lots of different interesting styles that you can apply pretty easily. So if you've got some footage that just needs kind of a quick, interesting look to it, the presets are really useful. And of course they are fully adjustable. You can come in here and make adjustments to the smoothing amount, the skin detail amount, and all that, which of course are the heart of Beauty Box. Smoothing amount and skin detail amount control how much smoothing, obviously, is going to be applied to your talent. And contrast enhance will help offset some of the contrast that you lose by having the smoothing applied. And so I'm actually going to turn off the presets now. It's not what I want to do in this case. Put that back to none. And so regardless of whether you have presets applied or whether you have just regular footage, this is where you're going to set up how much smoothing you're going to get. Now you can do other interesting things like set the skin detail amount to negative values like negative 400, which is the absolute minimum. And you can see that we actually make her skin look worse. And this is called the ugly box effect. Really brings out all the loveliness of her skin. And we even have a free filter that does just this effect. So you can download that from digitalanarchy.com if you uh, think that you're going to be using the ugly box effect on a regular basis. But usually that's probably not why you purchased Beauty Box. So we're going to set this to 40, which is a good amount. And to be honest, it actually might be a little bit too much in this case. So we're going to set this down to 20 and set skin detail smoothing to 25. And that's going to reduce the amount of smoothing a little bit retain a little bit more of the skin texture and give her a little bit better digital makeup look. Back back out. And so the last thing I'm going to talk about is just shine removal and that will help reduce hot spots that come from either sunlight or other bright hot lights. Quite frequently with skin it'll be a little bit reflective just because of sweat and other oils on the skin and shine removal will help reduce that, although usually it won't completely get rid of it, but it will go a long way to helping diminish it. So that's the essentials of Beauty Box. Again, the first thing you want to do is click on that Analyze Frame. That'll figure out what the skin tones are, build the automatic mask for you. You can, you can then dial in the smoothing amount and skin detail smoothing to get the look that you want, or just use one of the presets. And then all you need to do is render. So that's it. So thanks for joining me. Uh, you can check out more tutorials and get a free trial online at www.digitalanarchy.com. We've got lots of products and free trials for all of them, as well as you know, lots of other tutorials and some free stuff like the free ugly box filter. So check it out. And thanks again for joining me and see you in the next tutorial.